Mm. Hey guys. Hey. Hey, welcome to episode 291 of the official podcast. Charlie, where are you at the moment? I'm at Anything the warehouse. Going on over there? Yeah, so I'm at the warehouse. I got a haircut. I'm sure the people on screen right Whoa, now are what? probably wondering like who is this new host, but it's just me with shorter hair. Wait, how short did you go? Oh. I you're not going to believe this. I cut off an inch. A full Whoa! inch. Yep. Oh my god. Mhm. Mm why? What was the point? Wow. <laughs> dead, just to get like the dead. Genuinely. No, dead ends and split ends. Get them out of there. He just needed a change up. He's been rocking that look for too long. Yeah, he just needed, something different. needed something a little different. Yeah. Does this promote a longer length, like a maximum longer length in the future by splitting off those dead ends or whatever? Can it grow no. even longer now? No. Or is that I, your limit? I think I've reached my limit on hair growth, so I just keep the dead ends off. That's a shame. What happens if you push through the dead ends? What happens then? I don't know. You achieve enlightenment. I couldn't tell you. What would heaven. it cost? Probably start smelling. What would it cost for you to actually just go back to how you used to do your hair, short and cut and all that? I don't know. Danny actually did that today. So Danny, oh, who I'm sure all of you know, had long hair, got all of it cut off today, and he went back to like really short hair. Good for him. How does it look? Looks fine. It looks good. I can't actually imagine Danny with short hair. I've only known him with long hair. Yeah. Weird. Um, yeah, okay, well, cool. Good. Thanks for the update. You went to the warehouse well, just that, for the hair. Hang cut. on. He didn't answer my question. I asked what would it, would it take for him to go oh. back to his short hair. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It'd, it'd, take, it'd have to be like a, like a lot of money. Like a lot, I think. <laughs> so just money, not like, I don't know, a mutual agreement or something else. Maybe like a... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe you would make an entire <laughs> village in Africa agreement. smile. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's probably the just take a lot of it is the hair cutter has to cut his own hair as well, short. Yeah, <laughs> in like a bed or something. Nah, I'd probably Does just it have, have to be, be money? money. Yeah, I can't think of anything uh, else, like any other reason that would be motivational enough to go back to short hair. Money specifically from the African village, though. They have to generate it. <laughs> yeah. They have to come up with the funds. The finest cow from that village, yeah. <laughs> yeah um well good for you charlie i'm happy that you finally pushed through i know that was a very stressful situation for you you don't like touching your hair anymore so yeah it's no, good it that a, you did it it was a little scary i mean it's noticeably shorter now i mean you know it's i really don't look the same you guys can't see it but the video people can they're like wow that's a different guy who cut it did you do it no, 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 no. So we're friends with some of the local barbers and they come over every now and then they like cut all our hair at the warehouse. It's really sweet. <laughs> just, they just take off one inch of you. What a waste of time for them. No, well, yeah. I mean, they cut everyone else's hair. So I'm just kind of like their side act. And I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit. It was more like two inches ish. It looks Ooh. like two, maybe even two and a half. If you Remind us at, at a barber shop, would they even charge you? No, they they probably just do it like during lunch break. Like, yeah, I got gotcha. you. They do it just for a tip, I guess. So you still prefer yourself with long hair, clearly. Yeah. Like, okay. So do you ever get annoyed or frustrated when people say that they liked you better with short hair? <laughs> uh, not really. I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter. I get annoyed with long hair more than I did with short hair because it gets in the way a lot. But yeah. overall, I think it's just like a better yeah. look. I think I started to look really stupid with short hair, especially like in 2018. I don't know. Just I don't think it was working anymore. Mm, I don't think so. But long hair looks good as well. And you, you're just lucky. I think the fans are massively in the majority camp of long hair as well. I've barely seen anyone say they don't like it as much i've only seen people compliment charlie's long hair i see a lot for i see a lot on team short hair to be honest i see more for mm. short hair than long hair i think really do you, th mm -hmm. do you think wow. it's because they don't remember what it looked like are they just like uh reminiscing about perceived better days that didn't actually exist i don't know so like if you look at the old short hair gifts like the one where i do the creepy like uh, stalker smile thing like that's me with short yeah. hair and I, I don't think that looks very good like it just it really started to not work for me like late college when i was putting a lot more effort into it it, it worked mm. but when i got lazier in 2018 the short hair stopped being better yeah 
Plus, I, I guess long hair doesn't take much to maintain either. You just let it grow. Yeah, exactly. What about you, Kaya? Mm. What's going on with your hair? Uh, it's a struggle right now because it's summer and in summer it gets so fucking hot. I really don't know how women do it throughout their entire lives. It gets so damn hot. And like Charlie said, it gets in your face mm -hmm. and in the way all the time. I had no idea just how annoying it is. Like, I literally cannot function unless I put my hair in a bun now. I, like, I, nothing. I can't work out. I can't just sit on my computer and do shit. It just, my field of vision gets narrowed to like five degrees if I just let it flop around wildly. I also have very yes. thick hair and dense, so it's really just hot and annoying. But I still like it. I think I'll keep it for a while longer, just to see what happens and how I look. Would you ever shave it completely off? Well, like down to a bald head? No, like maybe a little bit of stubble. <laughs> like a buzz cut. Give him like a like a navy crew cut. Yeah. No, I definitely no. I I do not. I did that once in my life, and I was I think in high. It was either in high school or like a college freshman. I did that once and I discovered very quick that I have one of those head shapes that definitely does not lend itself to being bald. Just a mm -hmm. really shitty head shape where the back of what, my like head is bumpy? just completely flat. No, not bumpy, just fucking flat. I look like a henchman from a movie or something. I look really <laughs> dumb. Do you have like a Widow's Peak and stuff too? Do you have like a cool like superhero kind of uh, hairstyle if you let it go super short? Uh, what's a Widow's Peak again? It's like the, like, I have one. It's like that sharp piece in your forehead. Well, hold on. It's like that, uh, like, one little island of hair that sticks out beyond the rest, and it gets, like, really sharp. Oh. Guess? Well, maybe a really mild one, yeah. Oh, the not V too thing? Harsh, not too sharp. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, think what I'll do is, once I get older, I'll just, I'll go back to my old hairstyle just so I can look younger. <laughs> I think I have a form of the widow's peak, but just from the basis of a receding hairline at the edges. <laughs> so <it's, laughs> oh no! The oh, widow's Jackson. peak is it? You're not I balding, used... Jackson. The doctors are wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I've been to so many doctors. Oh man, it'd be so nice. I the science has to get there. It has to get there. I can't believe we haven't uh, it, have it been has. able to grow hair. Elon, look at Elon Musk. Elon Musk used to be like just like you, sad, pathetic, balding, and then he got Australian. billions and he <laughs> regrew all of his hair miraculously over the course of like a year. Yeah, get a hair transplant, hair transplant, Jackson. Get yeah. plugs. Get Rogaine. There's a million methods now. Did we talk about this before? That's because Elon yeah. Musk can actually afford that shit. Isn't that very expensive? Well, I think I think hair transplants have come down in price, but it's still like a full-on surgery, which is or That's Jackson, you could gain some confidence and own it and shave your head completely. Why not? No. Why not? Oh, shit, I was stupid. <laughs> that was a dumb idea. I'm with you, Jackson. Andrew just said some cringe shit. Oh my yeah. lord! Imagine until you not start, wanting to be bald. Until you start going bald, you don't know what it's like. I'd just shave my head by that point. You own up to it. Face your fears. Accept reality. Why do we have fat positivity and stuff like that, but not bald positivity? We do I have bald, bald positivity. Yeah, like we absolutely what? You do. Have... No, we don't. Yeah, We've got I'm like right three... now telling you you should shave your head and go bald. That's fake. Oh, Jackson. Um, like, it's only like super, you know, the super buff uh, rock style characters that get that kind of positivity that's right yeah. walter white was totally <laughs> buff and a rock star to be fair though it's not like walter white was like <laughs> slamming ham every night or yeah, he's, not like not an, he's not like an attractive icon yeah he's not like a sex icon <laughs> true <laughs> your solution is to become like a drug kingpin yeah, yeah. if you make a million dollars difficult. selling drugs you're not going to care how bald you are it's just science i think you still would even if you're the most successful man alive, that's going to be a source of weakness for you, being bald. Yeah, so is being short, Jackson. Well, Join the club. <laughs> Things are out of your control sometimes. I mean, yeah. What's his face? Jeff you Bezos wear, makes it yeah. work, Jackson. You can wear high heels, yeah, though. Yeah, look at, look at Jeff Bezos. He's bald as a fucking cue ball, and yet he's hugely rich. Do you he's think also he super insecure, though, to be fair. Yeah, he'd, uh, he'd, choose, yeah, to, really? he'd yeah. choose to have hair if, he, if the choice was there. I think most people would choose to have hair. Wait, why is he insecure? What did he do? 
Have you never watched any of those interviews with him, like with the um, like the cowboy hat and shit? He just seems really pretty insecure. I, I don't think I've ever heard Bezos talk. Ever. Oh, you're lucky. I only ever saw photos of him. He does not sound no, like he would be super successful. He actually sounds like dumb. <laughs> like, I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. He just sounds like actually stupid. I don't know how people sit down and watch these fucking super giga rich people for like advice and give uh, give TED talks and shit. Like I've never been into it. It's like, let me sit down and watch a Jeff Bezos interview and have him give me tips like, oh, okay. So your hint is start with a million dollars from your parents and then start a business. Thank you. Oh, Isn't I'll that the most frustrating right shit? Now. People like worship Elon Musk as a yeah. self-made billionaire, but he also came from extreme wealth to start. Like none of them are self-made. They all had a massive all advantage. Of them. I mean, I'm sure there's like one or two billionaires who are actually are self-made from rags to riches. But yeah, sometimes you listen to them. It's like, which one was it? Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard or some shit to start his business. And it's like, okay, so he had the privilege and luxury to drop out to one of the top schools on the planet and pursue his dreams. Like other people don't have that luxury. They did that Clearly with one of already the... Set. They did that with one of the Kardashians when she became a billionaire. Oh they said she it was, was the first yeah, daughter. Kylie Jenner. That. Kylie Jenner. Yeah, like Kylie the first self made yeah. billionaire woman. <laughs> when it's yeah. one of the fucking Jenners. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, oh, you mean the daughter of like two billionaires? Self made? <laughs> yeah, I guess. What does self made mean? Like, <laughs> I don't understand it's what it means. It's funny how you anymore. never see like a self-made African starving child become a billionaire. It's fucking weird, huh? How, how there's never any billionaires coming from those villages impoverished. You actually, it's you just reminded me. First world billionaires. You actually huh? just reminded me of one billionaire in particular that actually I think fits the mold of self-made. Isn't the guy behind Five Hour Energy, didn't he come from pretty much nothing and then donates like almost all of his billions to like conservation and like really positive shit? I vaguely remember reading about him a couple years ago. I have no back. idea what Five Hour Energy yeah, is. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. You guys don't know Five this Hour Energy? a billion energy? dollar company? Yeah, it's Five Hour Energy is absolutely massive. It's Let me find huge. The guy's name. It was one of the first really big mainstream popular energy drinks. Website yeah. looks shit. It, it um, became a billion dollar company in 2012, and that was still a decent bit before energy drinks became so like mainstream. Oh, yeah, no, it, it blew up. Yeah, it was huge. And I remember the guy, uh, the his name Manaj is... Manaj Bahargava. Yeah, he was apparently like a super wholesome guy. So the majority of like his billions that he was generating through this, he was giving back. So this guy just seemed like to come from pretty much out of nowhere. Since, start this and give it all away. Since 2015, he has pledged 99% of his net worth towards bettering the uh, world's less fortunate yeah, in we never hear about these kinds of characters, do we? I know, which is sad. Yeah. Because is true nice. altruism isn't exciting. People yeah. don't want to yeah. read about this shit. No one cares. They want to read about Elon Musk being like, I'm going to use my millions to launch my cat into space. They don't actually want to read about charity and shit because yeah. it's not it's not yeah, like sensational. Trauma. Yeah, it's not it's showing. It's not flashy. Could be authors authors usually are kind of self-made i guess because it doesn't take a lot of money to get started writing you know mm -hmm. you kind of just need a typewriter or a laptop like jk rowling would be an example where i think she used to be like lower or middle class woman yep. in an yeah. abusive relationship and then she became a billionaire she Wait, was how is she not the first self-made billionaire woman then? she was a single mother and was mm -hmm. writing harry potter in her spare time yeah how did Kylie Jenner Wait, beat her? Good points. Why is she not a self man? Well, <laughs> the thing is also, I think technically she's no longer a billionaire because she gives so much to charity that Forbes, I think at some point they announced that they had to drop her from the list of billionaires because she keeps giving away money. But she still would have yeah, been a billionaire that's before. A good, that's only a good thing, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. No, no, as I know. As controversial thing, and not... shitty as J.K. Rowling is, I mean, that's that's a great thing. I well, wish more billionaires were I like that. I wasn't calling her shitty. I don't think she's <laughs> shitty at but all. I think it's a good thing. That's the but reason also... why you don't hear about her is like the self-made billionaire. Kylie Jenner is like a pretty squeaky clean in the public eye with a massive following that worships her. So calling her self-made scores brownie points with that community. But if you say that for J.K. Rowling after everything she's done... And like all the people she's like uh, like pissed off over the years, you just get attacked. So no one really writes yep. about it. What what about um? Didn't Kylie Jenner do that protest video with Pepsi though? Yeah, but that's just, oh, that's just that, that was just goofy. So it's not like she actually made no people goofy. mad. It was just goofy. I forgot about that. 
Oh, it should have made people mad. It's such a fucking tone well, deaf hang on, video. Hang on. How much do we know that that was her idea? Do it we doesn't know matter that it if was... it was her idea. She was in it. She I would have been in it too, Jackson. I would have given the yeah, officer oh Pepsi God. if no, I was Jack offered the role. Jackson, what? there's a difference between her showing up and going, hey, Pepsi, I want you to give me the money to make my anti-war protest film, and Pepsi saying, hey, we'll give you $100 million to star in our commercial. There's a big difference. I, no, I disagree. I think... I think you say no to that one. Yeah, but you have no clear-cut idea of how it's going to turn out until you're actually a part of it. Yeah, exactly. Probably she knows the, co the, the raw concept behind one. Yeah, and Jackson, Jackson to somebody like... If Pepsi, if Pepsi came to your doorstep <laughs> with a briefcase yeah. of $100 million and said, you're going to star in an anti-war protest commercial, yeah, exactly. would you say yes or no? It wasn't an anti-war protest video. It was an anti-violence protest commercial. It was, we're all divided, which is why yeah, Pepsi yeah. can unite us. Like if Would you, you say yes or no to that? Yeah, if you get pitched on the concept, Jackson, like, hey, everyone's kind of mad at each other. Why don't you be in this commercial where we're going to try and make a, like a wholesome, positive thing about it and bring us together? You'd probably yeah. be like, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, all right, all right, wait, wait, wait. It's impossible for me to know whether I would say yes or no, and it depends on a price tag. But also, I would be completely uh, fine with then criticism being levied at me for and you she know, was appearing fine. in that. It's not like she's making a big stink about it. Well, true. Yeah, I guess. But not much of a stink was made in the first place. <laughs> That's not true. What are you she talking had, about? Yeah, it was massive news. Everyone making fun of her and Pepsi for Not directly. It. Fucking not directly at boys. her, though, right? Jackson, you love the boys so much. One of the newest episodes had a direct parody of that commercial yeah. calling it out for how or, yeah, cynical it was. Yeah, no, I know. That's what I was thinking of when I first started talking about this. So, and but, yet you say it wasn't a big deal. Well, it wasn't. She's still a self-made billionaire, and she does, like... Oh, can we stop calling her a yeah, self-made no, Can we stop saying that? But like, <laughs> like Charlie said before, like, she's still squeaky clean and shit, even though she's clearly, uh, I would say, <laughs> moralless, or she doesn't really care I don't about... I think starring in a bad commercial makes you a bad person. Uh, I think it could be an indicator. I, I think there's so much worse things that she should have done to earn that moniker, but starring well, in a way where she's designed a, commercial. It doesn't cares. mean she's a bad person, but she's definitely disconnected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. disconnected would be a much better word for I, it. I don't think yeah. there's a single billionaire who's connected to the modern man. It, well, Manoj Bagava right? possibly could be if he's pledged 99% oh, yeah. of his money. But that makes him not a billionaire, doesn't it? Yeah, makes him eventually mm. not a billionaire. Yeah. Also, just a fun fact about Manoj Bhagava, the, the CEO of uh, Innovations Ventures, who created... What was the energy drink called? Five Hour Energy. He was he was born in a city in India called Lucknow. It's, it's just called Lucknow. That's a cool city. It paid and off. Yeah. Every person that came from Lucknow became like a billionaire or super successful. They, uh, they do shit like that in Africa where they just name things after English phrases. I had a buddy who went to Africa and uh, his tour guide was named Good Luck. Like that was his official legal name, just Good Luck. That's really awesome, actually. <laughs> I think it's cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I guess Minaj Bhagava is one example of a billionaire who is genuinely self-made i think i think authors becoming self-made billionaires it still depends on how self-made they truly are like there's a lot of things that go into how successful an author could be like if they've got the right connections and stuff are they still uh self-made mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i mean that depends on what do you mean by connections like if your book is shit people are still not gonna really buy it <laughs> I disagree. I, don't know. I think I think if you get put in the right like uh, you know press releases or right yeah, Kylie Jenner Instagram right. posts, then are yeah. you still truly self-made? I don't know. Well, by that definition, Jackson, there's never going to be a self-made billionaire because you need the structures of play to create a billionaire in the first place. I agree. I don't think you can become a billionaire by being truly self-made. Well, it takes you... a lot of collaboration. Can you become anything <laughs> truly self-made yeah, then? Is there anything in the world that is self-made? Yeah. No. I think it's a um, poor poor title. Unless it, you're a fucking caveman living in the woods, you will never do anything self-made. <laughs> yeah, but you're not going to be a billionaire in the woods. That's, that's my point. 
I don't know what your point is, though. It's just saying, like... I get it, I, but... It, I, I don't. Like, I, I, nothing well, is self-made. Well, no. Yeah, no, that is that is my point. We're arguing whether Minaj Begava is self-made. Well, we're saying he is self-made, at least relative to Kylie Jenner. But I would say that there's still uh, a lot of other people that contributed to his success that doesn't make him truly self-made. I mean, he, he doesn't have the overhead, like, money coming down yeah, from when- his parents. Which yeah, Kylie but that's Jenner what had. people usually mean by self-made is, oh, this guy started from, like, zero and he didn't have yeah, any investment. Do they, though? Then why the fuck did they give it to Kylie Jenner? No one knows what self-made means. Pandering, Yeah, Jackson. it's just pandering. Yeah, that's just pandering, yeah. That's not really... And yeah. Yeah, yeah. That just made up bullshit. I mean, good for her, I guess, but not ma- self-made. Would you consider yourself uh, self-made, Charlie? No, I don't think so. I, I, Why? I don't think you had like uh, extremely wealthy parents who who handed things to you on a silver I platter. Still, but I mean, at the end of the day, like I got like the success I found came off the back of like Ray William Johnson promoting it, and then after that, it just became like a <laughs> cascade of like luck that had to transpire in order to for me to get to where I am. True. Yeah. Like I, it's not like I, I mean, pulled myself I think up you're by my bootstraps. I think you're downplaying how much you directly led to that, but yeah, yeah, I I, I agree. Yeah. Someone I would consider self-made though on YouTube would be uh, Mr. Beast. He started by just doing like random shit that could go viral, like counting to a hundred thousand in a single video and shit like that, and it went viral all on its own without any like handouts or shoutouts or anything. So he actually straight up like built that channel from nothing. So I thought that was pretty impressive. I'd say that's probably a better definition of self-made. Or even like PewDiePie, who was only doing Let's Plays, and then it just grew on its own organically. I got handed out a, a shout-out from the biggest channel on the platform. You still have views before Ray William Johnson, though. Yeah, but Not you kind of... Maybe... If you got that shout-out, it means you it had merits and you earned it, though. It wasn't like a favor. It wasn't like yeah. again Bezos's parents giving him three hundred thousand. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I wouldn't. No fucking reason. I wouldn't compare it to like growing up super like uh, with everything put on your plate or anything like that. It, but at the mm-hmm. end of the day, it was still luck. And Ray William Johnson like boosted everything for me. Yeah, it was I lucky. Mean, if you're going with that, you've also gotten shout outs along the growth ladder. Like PewDiePie gave you a big shout out back in the way back in the day, and there's been other ones floating around. Yeah, no, I don't I, really. I agree, uh, but I don't. I don't see a massive difference in between. Like that seems like just organic growth for YouTube, really. Like someone larger, uh, you know, shouts your stuff out or says that they enjoy your content. And I'm sure people did that with PewDiePie and and Mr. Beast when they were, you know, slightly smaller. I, I still think that word of mouth uh, is is a you know a factor there. Well, that's, that's what basically virality what virality is. To you. Virality yes, is literally point. word of mouth. Yeah, so I don't think it's too different. <clears throat> yeah. Jackson, would you All feel right. better if we read some ads? <laughs> yes, please. I have to piss so bad. <laughs> please. This is for Self- Jackson. Self-makers. Jackson yes. seems like the man who needs me to tell him about something. Because oh he's, he's telling me Same about everything. Oh, man. You know, if you love a story, you're going to love the story about watches. Once upon a time, there was a company. It was in South California, and there were two college dropouts. Their names weren't Bill Gates and other quote-unquote self-made billionaire who dropped out of Harvard, no. But they were two men who made Movement. Movement is a fashion brand, and it's one of the fastest-growing watch brands on the planet. And they've also expanded to have blue light glasses and minimalist jewelry and style essentials and all sorts of other incredible things. When you go to Movement, you're going to say, my God, this watch has the look and quality of a $400 to $500 watch, but I'm paying a fraction of the price because it's built entirely online and all of the process is owned from start to finish? That's crazy. But I want this watch. I'm tired of putting my arm through my monitor and pretending I'm wearing it. I hate printing out pictures of it and wrapping them around my fucking sleeves. It doesn't make any sense. What's that? I can have it shipped directly to my door for free, and if I don't love it, somehow, I can ship it right back? 
Well, you've got me sold, good sir. Movement watches just sound like an incredible gift, an incredible game changer, an incredible good bargain. If you want to elevate your look with style that doesn't break the bank, then join the movement and get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash official. That's mvmt.com slash official for 15% off with free shipping and free returns. And if you like free things, well, I have another free code for you. And it's a website that you can visit for free. You can visit this website for free. No one will charge you a single dollar to look at this website. Do it from your phone. Do it from your computer. Do it from the library. Do it from the McDonald's Wi-Fi. doesn't matter. Find a way to do it. Because you're going to check out Manscaped. And while you're checking out Manscaped, you're going to get checked out by other people. Let's face it. You get checked out by other people, whether you don't believe it or you do believe it or you think you're attractive or you think you're unattractive, it doesn't matter. Someone out there is checking you out. They're eyeing what you've got. They're spying on your goods. And can you imagine how red in the face, how fucking choked up with embarrassment you'll be if they see some scraggly little pubic hair climbing its way out of your pants? The fuck are you thinking? Walking around in public with that disgusting, horrid mound just... Pulling Ugh. down your fucking waistline and going, hey, look at me. This person doesn't trim. Well, with Manscaped, you can get the Performance Package 4.0 with a lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer designed to trim hair on loose skin. It's also going to come with the prop crop preserver and the crop reviver to help show off your set for this year. You're also going to get a travel bag. You're also going to get anti-chafing boxer briefs. Those are a little free gift thrown in there by Manscaped because they know that they want you to be checked out and they want you to be your best self when you're getting checked out in terms of your pubic hygiene. Look, kick discomfort and poor hygiene to the curb and get the best tools for the job. Travel to manscaped.com for the exclusive offer of 20% off plus free shipping with code official. 20% off free shipping code official at manscaped.com. New year, no pubes in 2022 with Manscaped. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com, code official. Even, it is winter at the moment, at least over here. So if you're looking to keep your pubes around for warmth, which kind of mm -hmm. somewhat makes sense, at least, at least get Manscaped uh, in the case of emergency. For like kindling, those, right? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In case you need to light a fire. You could build a sweater yeah. for your girlfriend out of them. Also, if you are outside and you want to feel the nice, brisk, cold winds you can lower your pants and like right there bare skin feels good it's three uses right there for your pube shaver thanks manscaped mm -hmm. thank you Alrighty. so boys what do we have for this week andrew i saw you talking about morbius again in the topics channel on our private discord was i um hang on what did i post <laughs> You it was all a blast. Was it the blockbuster has yeah. 16 coffees? Oh, yeah. Like it's this. just an amusing little fun thing I found. Uh, so we talked last episode, I think, about the last blockbuster on Earth, how there's one yeah. left and they advertised they're the last one. They right now have 16 copies of Morbius to rent, and six of them are currently already rented. They invested which, big in yeah, Morbius. Which, which I find fun. Number one, they have so many copies. But number two, who are those six people who went to the last blockbuster on Earth to rent Morbius on DVD? People just like you. You would absolutely do that. <laughs> yeah, I probably would. It's really uh, one person, yeah. It'd be a fun road trip. You go to wherever the fuck this blockbuster is. You ask for Morbius. You get it. You get it for a week. It'd be fun. Why not? <laughs> Okay. Is, my favorite thing about the story was that they actually purchased 16 copies. That's like half of Blockbuster's <laughs> remaining budget, and they spent it all on, yep. all on Morbius. Apparently, this is located in Oregon, so we could we could road trip to Oregon, go rent the uh, rent the Morbius, come back, do it all in a week. Be that fun. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Someone finally what is, gets it. What is Oregon? A state Who, like. Yeah, but like, is it in the middle of America, directly in the middle? I'm wondering no. why it's the only place with a blockbuster left. It's it's a very hipster place, very uh, okay. very hipster. So yeah. it it actually makes a lot of sense that it's there. Jackson, you don't remember? Andrew told us that story. Where we went to Oregon with his brother during like the yeah. Nike. Oh, that Super was Oregon Nude festival or whatever. Yeah, 
Yeah, I do remember that now. Yeah. Okay. My brother lives in Oregon. He's a giant hippie. Well, it's I remember place, Oregon hipsters for and hipsters. Uh, hipsters is, and hippies. Is uh, you know, the old game Oregon Trail. That's about it. Yeah, it's on the west coast. It's sandwiched between <clears throat> Washington and California. So it was actually a big state. Yeah. Fairly okay. populated, large land mass, but it's I don't know. It, there's a show called Portlandia that I've watched. And it's uh, Fred Armisen and Carrie Blackstone making fun of just hipsters and weird, like, trends that catch on. It's 100% accurate to Oregon. It is nothing oh, but Portland, people trying Oregon. to... Yeah, Portland. Portland is the there. The place that lets, and, that's, yeah. like, on fire every fucking year and where they, like, have <laughs> autonomous zones. That fucking cringe place yeah. full of hippies. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, now it makes baby. sense. Okay. Now Jackson, you're I'm sure it. you've heard of it. Now yeah, you're okay. getting it. I've heard of so, Portland. So yeah. Portland, Portland yeah. specifically is a city where everyone has to outweird each other. The keyword is has to, not like they want to. They have to. They have to be more unique and more I interesting than places. everyone else. Yeah. And that's, that is that's so Oregon. frustrating to be around. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at yeah. I'm looking at a video of Keep Portland Weird at the moment. Someone posted it in chat. It's just a bunch of people on unicycles wearing Darth Vader outfits with <laughs> uh, yeah. Scottish bagpipes that I would blow never, out fire. I would never live there. It seems like a nightmare. But visiting there just to be like, ah, oh, fuck, what's going on here? It's it's fun. It's a fun place. Portland just sounds like a place that's inhabited by only theater kids from back in yep. high yeah. school. Yeah. Oh man, I hate yeah. theater. That's kids very too, accurate. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah we should go oregon's fun it's got some cool things do they have that play that kind of place in florida at all do you have a keep uh somewhere in florida weird place mm, uh i don't think so the only thing i'd say is I similar think florida to overall is, is pretty weird though right yeah. i'd say the only place similar to that would be wilton manors which is the gayest city in america so they well, are very, that's very much, weird. Well, no, but they're very, very outwardly decorated with pride. So there's like tons of outlandish decorations and drag queen fashion and shit that you see. Yeah, in, that's like, not stores. like that's not what I think of when I think of like keep Portland weird, though. I don't it's think of just like kind of pride. All I can think of, I guess. Like, I know Texas has one with uh, I think it's Austin. Is it Austin? That's the weird one, because I keep hearing of like keep Austin weird. Um, that's, that's I've like, I, that. I've also never heard that. All right. Well, you're lying. I'm Googling it. Keep Austin <laughs> weird. <laughs> you're only saying that cause you just looked at a keep Portland weird gif. Uh, it's a thing on Wikipedia. I'm not sure how big it is. I mean, it's a pretty big city. Austin's a huge city, but I've never heard of this. Yeah. Keep Austin weird. It's, Somewhere it's else definitely Texas. Texas's most hipster city. Yeah, for but, sure. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't think, think it rivals. Austin. I don't think it rivals Portland though. Like Portland, Portland is probably the weirdest, one of the weirdest places in America. Yeah. Offbeat, I think, is a good word for it. Cringe is a good word for it. Remember when <laughs> yeah, they had you're a not warlord wrong. rule like a subsection of their fucking city, a, a rapper with an Uzi. <laughs> Wait, yeah, God. I don't know that one. You guys don't remember this? This was in the Chaz, the something something autonomous zone. This was around like in the 2020 riots when all the hipster white people were like, oh, rioting is fun. This is about us now. And then they established an autonomous zone. And then a rapper moved in and he became the local warlord of that section of the city. And he just but went like, around ruling that part. You mean like a mayor? I guess, yeah, basically, like a hipster Mad Max mayor, like Immortan Joe. Did they? Did the people in the Chaz Autonomous Zone vote for him? Was it a Democratic warlord? I don't think so. <laughs> Someone's saying that was Seattle. Am I misremembering? I swear to God, it was Portland. I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't I tell you. I don't know what Seattle. you're referring to. I could see <laughs> Seattle and Portland getting mixed up. Speaking of other oh, warlords, Seattle. though... Speaking of other warlords, though, why don't we uh, update everyone on what's happened with Ezra Miller since the last time we've spoken about him? <laughs> what happened? Because I, can, oh, I cannot believe that it is still <laughs> ongoing. How has he not been arrested? So the the latest my... report that I read was three days ago. Yeah, Kai, do you want to read it? No, no, you go ahead. 
So it's just a it's a Twitter post that uh, that and has announced that Ezra Miller has reportedly been housing three children in a gun filled farm. Video footage shows eight firearms in the living room and a one year old baby reportedly had a bullet in its mouth. So he is he's he's whole, he's whole like it's a cult thing now. Well, it was a cult thing before, but now it's really a cult thing because he's got his own farm. So what I heard is he apparently a man is now looking for his wife and his child both of whom are with Ezra Miller on the Ezra Ezra Miller Jesus on this farm where he's raising uh weed and apparently the raising weed the law, I guess <laughs> growing weed sorry watching it grow <laughs> yeah I'm just so confused by the photo sorry my brain is blanking out they have like these fucking they're using these stock photos of old timey guns like these pirate pistols for some reason in this article, anyway, yeah, so apparently he's stock, uh, stockpiling guns and ammo, and there apparently have been photos of little babies with ammunition and chewing on ammunition and choking on it and shit. And he is um, growing wheat plants on his property that are apparently illegal because he's not allowed to have that many or some shit. So now people are suspecting, what if this turns into an ATF thing and it turns yeah. into a shootout like Waco? Where does yeah. he keep getting the children? Yes. So, in the case of the three this... children, the, the three children that are staying at the Ezra Miller farm, three children. Yeah. So there's three children baby. that are being housed at the Ezra Miller estate, and the reason they're there is because their mom is there. So the mom brought them. Okay. Oh my God! Why do you? Why do these women keep bringing their children to Ezra Miller, like as sacrificial lambs? Celebrities, yeah, Jackson. He's. Uh, yeah. Everyone will people, do dude, everything for celebrities. That's how it works. Ezra Miller has been hosting a 25-year-old mother and her three young children at their Vermont farm, a living arrangement that worries the children's father. No shit. As you well as know, two others with knowledge of the situation. You want to know all the thoughts going through the 25-year-old mother's head? Oh my god, you were the Flash. You were in the Justice League. Wow, I loved you in that movie. I saw you on a big screen. Yeah. Take my children. That's literally what's happening. I'm not kidding. That's what happened with Michael Jackson. There was all that weird shit in there. And some of the moms were like, hey, love you. You well, is made he just, music. You're the best. Do we, know, do we know how he's finding them? Is he like, are they like posting uh, like through Instagram or something? Is she messaging him through Instagram? Like how, how's he finding them? Um, it says during Miller's meltdown, Miller specifically secured a flight to Hawaii for the woman and the children without the father's knowledge. By the way, I think the father is also like convicted of domestic abuse and shit. So maybe that's why the woman had like an incentive to run away from him. Um, the dad's been trying to get the kids back since April of this year. Representatives of Miller did not reply to a request for comment. <laughs> uh, multiple sources note there was frequent and heavy marijuana use in front of the kids with, quote, little concern for ventilation. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Boy. And apparently he's been giving the child high doses of LSD, allegedly. Oh, here we go. <laughs> there it is. Awesome. Wait, can we, can we talk about how weird this uh, situation is? During Miller's Hawaii visit, the actor was arrested twice and at least 10 calls were placed to local police reg regarding their behavior. The first arrest stemmed from a disorderly conduct charge when Miller was set off by a couple at karaoke, we've talked about that, singing Shallow from A Star Is Born on March 28th. But then, later that night, Miller allegedly entered a couple's bedroom and threaten them saying I will burn you and your slut wife according to the request for a temporary <laughs> restraining order that the couple filed Miller also allegedly stole a passport and wallet you guys don't I remember that? that we talked about that I, I brought I that remember up. the first part I remember the no, I, re I remember part. all of it I did not know that he yelled I'm going to burn your slut wife this guy's yeah. such a fucking misogynist all he does he grooms only girls and he beats only women and he hates women so much it's fucking hysterical and okay so here's my conspiracy theory for why he's not been arrested yet I assume that this guy has a lot more dirt on him than we know right now and if he gets arrested all of that shit is gonna come out well uh -oh. DC has a lot of money invested in this guy, right? This movie isn't even out yet. So I assume that all of the rich investors are kind of like keeping the cops off of him until at least the movie is out. <laughs> That's my assumption. I, I don't I know see. what the fuck else would be the reason for the cops not to just knock on the door and like do a property search for him. When you said DC, I completely forgot that you were talking about like DC, the comic book 
company. I thought you meant like Washington DC, like the government invested in him. They're tracking him down. They can't let him go for maybe, too much longer. Maybe, maybe that too. I mean, uh, think about it though. I mean, how many years did Weinstein get away with this fucking bullshit, right? Even though everybody knew about it. Same with Epstein. It is, there was just some people pulling the strings and keeping the cops off of him. I used, maybe they're doing the same thing with Ezra. You know, it would be kind of bad if we had court proceedings literally at the same time as his movie was coming out. The movie's probably we found not going to come out. Of shit. They, the I thought Warner, they were going to not release no, it. No, Warner Didn't Bros. keeps... Last week they are? No, Warner Bros. keeps flip-flopping on it. Last I heard, they were like going to stick to their guns. Like, yeah, it's coming out. This is the last time Ezra Miller will be the Flash. And then the allegations got worse. And I thought I remembered reading them saying, yeah, we're still not sure what's going on with the Flash. <laughs> that's That's not like a cancellation or anything. I haven't seen any like anything that points to them canceling it yet. So mm. is it finished? Like, is it ready to go? Yeah, yeah. He may as well release it then. Why not? Uh, it's just not really a good look. It's no, a, I know, but you don't bad have optics. Ad, you don't have to advertise it. You can just be like, "Hey, we made this movie before we knew of the circumstances. Here it is. Moving on. If it's already finished, why not?" Would it be classy if they released it with like a five minute uh, mini documentary detailing <laughs> Ezra Miller's crimes Ezra comes directly on the at the screen start. in the beginning and apologizes for all his actions? Yeah. I mean, the thing well, is, holding a Ezra's Pepsi already, I assume he's already paid, right? I mean, do do actors get a cut of the final proceeds of the if, movies? So I looked that up not too long ago. It depends on their size. So in a movie like The Flash, where oh. Ezra Miller is the Flash, he is the draw, the main character, sometimes they do mm -hmm. actually have deals where they get a cut of a, of the gross, I think. They get like a, yeah. a percentage of gross. Mm. Okay, if, it, if that's the case, I could see why you wouldn't want to release it. Yeah, but there's no telling if Ezra Miller has that kind of deal. I don't know what star power they're capable of pulling, especially yeah. when their resume is fantastic beasts in the flash. It, it depends on the, the contract, you know, sometimes you get a flat rate for a movie. Other times you get a percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I so just, I guess, I don't know. I mean, well, okay. That's my conspiracy theory. Why do you guys think he's not arrested yet then? If it's not Hollywood pedophiles shielding him or investors protecting him from the law. There still isn't, I, I'm going to go out on like the standard reason where they don't have enough actionable evidence to convict Ezra Miller of anything at the moment. He got arrested mm. in Hawaii like a few times, but let go for what were ultimately misdemeanor charges of like a, like a assault and breaking and entering. But I don't believe they've actually like taken Ezra for anything huge at the moment. Assault's not a felony. What? Are you saying it's uh, not a felony, or are you asking? I, I can't. Yeah, I, can't, you, you know, I couldn't you tell if that was a statement let, or a question. <laughs> I said, is assault not a felony? You said that he only got brought in by misdemeanors, but wouldn't assault be a felony? Oh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, this was in uh, Hawaii. I believe they were taken in for the chair throwing thing, which I thought was assault, but maybe Ezra Miller wasn't charged with maybe assault, Hawaiians maybe Hawaiians are just built tougher and to get assault charges there you have to like really fuck someone up here why, why don't we get a conclusive answer Ezra right. Miller criminal charges so they were arrested for disorderly conduct and harassment so uh, that, I, I, that was oh, with the chair so throwing it yeah that was for the chair well, throwing the thing with against. assault is the bar for assault if anything is actually lower than you might think assault if you, like, threaten somebody with a beating, that is assault. You don't have to actually beat them up for it to be assault. When you do beat them up, I think that's battery. So what he but did, I'm sure in you my are. opinion, is absolutely assault of you breaking into your fucking bedroom yelling, I'm gonna bitch wife or whatever. But because he's famous, that could have been downgraded to harassment. He could have straight out been assaulting yeah. people, but they were like, oh, that's Ezra Miller. Just charge him with har harassment. It's fine. Yeah, it, they, yeah. It they downgraded the only... it to an unpaid parking ticket. Yeah, it seems the only thing they were charged <laughs> with while in Hawaii was harassment and disorderly conduct. There's nothing about assault or anything. Even though when you read the reports, it sounds like assault. Yeah. He also allegedly stole oh. a passport. I thought that was a felony. Uh, actually, I'm wrong. April 19th, arrested for second degree assault. Oh, well, there it is. <laughs> I, I, don't, so I don't know then how they're still out there 
causing so much mayhem. Second degree assault is a felony then, right? I would think so. I, and again, I thought stealing a passport was like tantamount to identity theft, which was a felony, Who's right? A, whose passport did he steal? The girl's? It just says stole a passport, so I'm not sure. Yeah, he tried to pose off as a 25-year-old married woman. <laughs> I, mean, I think he's trying to. I don't know, it's weird. That's my only explanation. I don't know what the fuck else to make of this. Like, He is obviously fucking weird, and there's shady shit, and it is... Awkward. It is weird that the cops aren't even knocking at his fucking door, you know? I also think it is a little odd, especially if the if they were actually charged with second-degree assault. There should be no circumstance where they have access to a ton of weapons and an entire family. Yeah, and okay, so I just, I just looked it up. For a basic first offense of passport fraud, which I guess this could be classed under... You can be fined 250000 and sentenced up to 10 years in prison. So that they take passport stuff pretty seriously in America. And well, it's a federal not that crime. Seriously. Well, how, yeah, how is he getting away with this? I, it did say he allegedly stole it. So I guess there's no evidence that he actually stole it. This is what's confusing. I don't know what crimes he actually committed and which well, you, ones... The thing is, you have to say allegedly until they're tried and convicted of the crime. But is there an actual, like, police investigation open on this? Yeah, don't you there remember they were be. trying to serve Ezra Miller, uh, but they couldn't locate him. <laughs> yeah. They couldn't locate him at his fu fucking farm that he set up with his weed and bullets and well, you, babies. You would think that, that now they can locate them since they have a fucking farm full of guns and and kids. This is so fucking confusing. How is nothing happening? How is the only thing happening him committing war crimes? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's being framed by know. evil Flash. There's a second Ezra Miller out there. Reverse Flash, classic. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. With that like was me, mustache. Ezra. Well, Reverse Flash is an actual character in DC, and he's literally just the evil Flash, and his entire motivation is to fuck over the Flash. What was his like? Why does he want to fuck over the Flash? I know who you're talking about, but I don't remember why he hates the Flash so much. <sighs> I don't either, actually. Uh, is it is it the same character from a different timeline? No, it's a completely different guy who just he hates the Flash so much yep. that he became the opposite Flash. His entire motivation and everything he does is to ruin the Flash's life. Yeah. Yeah, there's no updates or anything on this guy right now. Nothing. What Jackson read was the last we heard of him. Just feeding babies bullets and LSD, I guess. Oh, so weird. Well, yeah, well... Uh, all right, we'll keep you updated on Ezra Watch, everyone. Mm -hmm. Weekly news. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ezra Watch, week four. <laughs> As he becomes a real-life supervillain. All right, where, where do you guys think this will end up? Do you think it'll be a Waco uh, no. situation? Not I've, at all. No. The, the way this wraps no. up is a super underwhelming ending where authorities finally decide that they have enough actionable evidence to charge Ezra Miller with some serious crimes. Yep. They're going to get a warrant. They're going to knock on his door. He'll be either in a drug stupor or kind of weird and disoriented and they'll take him in and wrap all this up. It'll be really boring. I think for this to ever involve law enforcement with actual force and guns, he would have to do something with taxes. He'd have to like skip paying his taxes or something and be arrogant about it, then they would fucking, they would probably bring back the guillotine and do a public execution for him, but till then, I doubt it. I do... Till then... Go ahead. I was gonna say, I do think that there is a potential X factor with them. I think Ezra Miller might just be wild enough to shoot at cops if they do actually arrive with a warrant. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Well, that is a Waco. Thing, then. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm putting it like like a point towards you, Jackson. Where I think there is that possibility that Ezra Miller is unhinged enough to actually do that. That would be fun. That, well, that certainly uh, wouldn't be fun for the kids and the kids, the mother. Yeah. Well, get the kids well, out. Well, if they get a gun I mean, too, shoot up be. between the flash. Oh yeah, give. I mean, the kid's already chewing on bullets. I mean, yeah, he's, he's clearly training. born a gunslinger. He's <laughs> like training them. It's fine. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think that if 
If uh, the Flash is going to start shooting at cops, I don't think he's going to give them like a timeout to get the kids and and Ezra <laughs> Miller. Out of that. Ezra I won't comply Miller with your warrant. In fact, I feel uh, like fighting back. But let me get the kids out first. Ezra Miller Just seems like the person, horrible. without a doubt, that if a shootout starts going out, he will hold up one of those children as a human shield. Yeah, straight up. Well, you guys are also making it sound like Ezra would be the only one putting the children at risk. The fucking FBI would torch his estate down with the babies in it and cook them alive. Why? Yeah. That's the shit they do. What do you mean, why? They've done it before. Do you not know what Waco actually was? They fucking burnt people alive. Or am I thinking of a different uh, assault on a compound? Pretty sure that was Waco. I actually don't remember Waco. Yeah, but this is just oh, one yeah, they, they are fucking celebrity evil. dude. <laughs> this isn't a whole compound of people. He's starting a cult. It started with, with one dude, but now he has like three Can babies and two girls, life? right? Waco started with one person. Hmm. He's behind you. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That, I'm still here. The recording is going to be all kinds of fucked up. Everything on OBS crashed there, but so be it. Uh, I think there is an argument to be made that Ezra Miller has very cult like ambitions here. There's the 12 year old grooming allegations where Ezra was talking to a 12 year old, like all the way up until she was 18. And then uh, she went with them and lost her Instagram account to Ezra and all that shit. So it's not just this one family. Seems like he has a history of like bringing people into the fold from all over yeah. the place. I think. It, By I the think way, he, I was right. the The FBI did burn down seventy six people, including twenty five children and two pregnant women, at the Waco siege because of a gas canister that caught fire when they shot it. So it can happen. Yeah, I hope he surrenders himself before a fucking baby burns down. Um, yeah, I think that Ezra has, like, godlike tendencies and, like, narcissism, and those are, like, the predilections to, like, you know, cult stuff. So, I think there's the possibility that this does evolve into a cult scenario. Yeah, I'm but not saying... I feel, like, I feel like the fact that the police know about him already limits that, though. I feel like maybe they would step in if people started going to this compound and joining up with the Flash cult. I don't know. What do you guys I'm not think saying would be the funniest couldn't. outcome? I think I it would think. be the funniest. If he drops the fucking children and it becomes this like catch me if you can movie thing where he's on his own and he just keeps running from the law in different disguises, I think that would be fucking awesome. Oh, like he actually makes it out of whatever confrontation does happen and then they go track him across the country? Yeah, across the planet. Yeah. And he constantly he could, just he has does these have, stolen uh... passports and disguises. He has all of Hawaii to play with. He could hop from the islands, just hide in the trees. <laughs> Break into playground. everyone's bedrooms. It's his domain. <laughs> and he won't be finished until he threatens every woman in Hawaii. <laughs> He's like the ultimate <laughs> incel. What is wrong with them? <laughs> uh, really right, something. Well, that was the Ezra update, I guess. Yeah. At Jackson, you had another big topic, something about the MCA. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Something uh, really embarrassing for a person. So, yeah, a few months ago... This is a Destiny topic, but it's not really anything to do with Destiny. A few months ago, um, uh, a lot of Destiny YouTubers that post Destiny content you to YouTube were mass DMCA'd. There was something like 95 of them that uh, their channels got, like, you know, struck down, basically. And they assumed it was by Bungie itself, the creators of Destiny. But it's now been revealed by Bungie through lawsuit that the person who DMCA'd, DMCA'd everyone in that mass uh, strike system thing was a disgruntled Destiny YouTube creator himself who had <laughs> his videos DMCA'd earlier in the year. <laughs> so, it's almost as if YouTube's system of letting literally anyone ever make a DMCA claim is a bad system. That's what Bungie it's also alleges YouTube in their lawsuit. It's, yeah. yeah. Bungie's actually taking MCA a pretty strong stance that YouTube is also at fault for this. Um, they absolutely and that this are. And needs to be better, which is great. 
Good on Bungie, first of all. They're suing the guy for $7.6 million because he struck <laughs> down 90-something channels. But what makes this even better is that this guy, this guy, he goes by Lord Nazo, Nazo something like that, Lord Nazo, who uh, was himself a YouTube Destiny content creator that had his video struck down early in the year because they were just genuine uploads of the Destiny soundtrack. Uh, he inserted himself into the drama while this was all going on and was offering support to the people that he himself was DMCAing. He was yeah. pretending like a, a Jesus complex. It was so good, well, some that's of not, his messages. That's not what it was. He was doing it to like like a placate suspicion, like, oh, I'm just like you guys. I also got my yeah. shit taken down. It, you know, We're in this together. I don't think he was doing it to be like a savior or anything. He was doing it to put himself at the bottom of the list of suspects. How did they like, find did out he did it? Log? I think it was both. Well, um, yeah, wait, there, there was something to do with how he was discovered. I'm pretty sure he used a VPN to strike down all of these uh, creators in the first place. Smart. But he did so, yeah, it was very smart. But what wasn't smart was that he was logged into his personal Google account when he was striking uh, these down. <laughs> so he, he had his address and so IP address. Stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> there, to be fair, though, there were a lot of ways they could have caught this guy. Because he had to impersonate a third-party agency Bungie uses. So in order to do that, he had to register, at least on some level, with YouTube as an official entity with legitimate like information. So they could have just subpoenaed that from YouTube, which is actually one of the big holdups and why Bungie was so mad at YouTube, because they wouldn't give it to him. So they had to go through like a different channel of finding the guy's identity. Oh, is that true? They YouTube didn't correspond with them. Yeah, I thought so they did. When no, when the when the lawsuit first came out, maybe there was like an intermediate update. But when I first saw the lawsuit, uh, Bungie was desperately trying to get cooperation from YouTube to catch this guy, and they wouldn't budge on giving any of his information to Bungie. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember oh, the yeah. day that that this all came out, everyone in the community immediately suspected that it was Bungie doing it, or the yep. Bungie uh, associate company that is in charge of all of their like ip protection stuff so the community sentiment was immediately like extremely angry at bungie including the 96 super popular destiny uh, youtube content creators so it was it was a pretty bad situation for bungie and the entire time this lord nazo guy was in the dms of everyone being like, yo, yeah, this happened to me earlier in the year. We can't let Bungie get away with this. We can't let YouTube get away with this. Hopefully they reinstate our small YouTube creators. It was... So what was his yeah, what, what was his uh, motivation here? He was just jealous of them? No, he was mad. He was mad at Bungie. For what? G getting actually struck? His stuff, yeah. yeah, his stuff had been legitimately struck in the, at mm. the start of the year. And he, ha he had a grudge oh. against these big YouTube content creators because they had Twitter audiences that could then, you know they could utilize to get the attention of Bungie, whereas he couldn't. But he so also, like, oh. to be fair, his were legitimate takedowns. He would actually just rip straight soundtrack from the game for his channel. Right. And Bungie was really sweet about it. They warned him multiple times not to do it again because it's just going to keep resulting in strikes, and he kept doing it. Yeah. These, these messages are cringe too. So he was in the discords of other uh, YouTubers, I guess, playing these mind games with them. So he says, like, yeah, it's people like us who suffer, the little guys, or just anyone with two, fewer than 250,000 YouTube subscribers. And he yeah. says, hell, you could make a Google account right now. Go to YouTube Studio and submit a takedown request on any video you want. It's so easy. It's the most bullshit copyright system ever. It's so brain dead simple that even a child could submit a takedown request without needing any proof of authorization. All of this is true. And yet yeah. he somehow still fucked it up. Yeah, it's so easy. <laughs> Here's how I did it, guys. Look how easy I did it. Yeah, the fact he said the fact that it's that easy makes it very likely for someone to just abuse the system. This fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I recorded how easy it is. Here's how. Here's me doing it. Yeah. Fucking yeah, idiot. Is such bullshit. Yeah. So, oh yeah, on March twentieth, like a, a couple weeks after. Uh, it all it all happened. Bungie, this is before it was known that Lord Nazo was the one that did it. Bungie said, 
uh, on Twitter, we're aware of the, a series of copyright takedowns on YouTube and we're actively investigating. This includes content on our own Bungie channel. So he also DMCA, D, DMCA'd Bungie itself as well <laughs> for their own content. <laughs> These actions are not being taken at the request of Bungie or our partners. Please stand by for future updates. And he replied to that tweet saying, I just knew it wasn't you guys. I just couldn't believe that you do this to us after eight years. I'm so glad I was right. You oh son of a bitch. Oh my lord, what a f <laughs> sleaze ball. Yeah, what a fucking loser. It's so cringe. How old is this guy? Old enough to be sued for seven point like six million dollars. Yeah, it's not some kid. I think he's in his twenties. God damn. Far old enough to know better. I thought I saw him because I was doing a bit of groundwork investigation on the day that it all came out because I was interested in seeing what Bungie's response would be or if they were the ones doing it. Um, so I was looking through the Reddit and stuff, the, the Destiny Reddit subreddit, and I, I'm pretty sure I recall seeing him in like every thread. Uh, posting giant like essays about how how um this happened to him at the start of the year as well so he he was very active on the day obviously because i i distinctly remember seeing it <laughs> that's so cringe <laughs> has he come up with a statement since he got caught i don't think so it's a good question i feel like he has yeah. to he's a, he's like a terminally online poster i feel like there's definitely something somewhere his Twitter account has been deleted, as has his subreddit. Oh, well, that's sad. Oh, man. He had a subreddit? Well, I'd delete fucking everything, too, if I got sued for seven fucking million. No, sorry, I meant his Reddit account had, uh, has been deleted. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I love the fucking comments and stuff defending him, as well as actually people defending this loser. Like, someone on Reddit says, Guy did something stupid and petty. But they decide to ruin his life. Is that really worth that sort of punishment? Yeah. And while seven point six million is pretty big, it's also <laughs> he 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 actively fucked over a hundred other people. There's oh, have, always like, going to no be people playing street. devil's advocate, exactly like you do, Jackson, with like fucking arcades and shit being gambling. Well, <laughs> no, I still stand by that. That wasn't devil's advocate. I I, I think it's hypocritical to say that arcades aren't similar to microtransactions to some degree microtransactions are just more effective Here your point wasn't that they're similar again. to some degree you put them on the same pedestal as they are both equally bad no i didn't i vaguely recall you saying eh, like yeah, this is just I as bad as arcades no I, I distinctly said that uh microtransactions are much worse i just think that they're similar in intention that's what my point was I went back and listened to it. Mm. I also, right. last episode, to just clarify some things, since we're doing that now, I guess. Uh, last episode, there was also a section where uh, we were talking about evolution, I guess, and how oh, animals boy, don't evolve go. to go back into the ocean. And I think we, we collectively kind of said we can't think of any animals that did. And then every single fucking comment on the YouTube video was like, I can't believe Jackson's a dinosaur fan and he didn't know whales evolved to go back into the ocean. So I guess, yeah, <laughs> whales evolved to go back into the ocean. At some yeah, point. and you're arguing that arcades are microtransactions? God, why should I listen to anything you say? Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know oh. anything. Fucking idiot. <laughs> God, what a loser. We've always said we don't know anything on this show. I'm going to sue you for 7.6 million, Jackson. Well, now I know Honestly, that Wales okay did We should sue more people who abuse the DMCA system. It should be way easier to have some sort of a counterclaim uh, opportunity with that shit. It's so retarded. It is so retarded that literally anyone can do it. And it's not even a... Like, the system is so busted that complete fucking foreigners can submit DMCA complaints to American companies. Without anything, like just a private citizen can just, like this guy said, even uh, click a button on YouTube and then some creator is fucked. Why? The system is ass. Why don't they fix it? Mm -hmm. I think no the fucking movie no industry, I assume. No incentive to, they're still a monopoly. But it, wouldn't it create legal issues for them in the future? Clearly like hasn't yet, yep. unless Bungie decides to take the first step. Hmm. It yeah, seems like it would just kind of create more headaches things. for YouTube, yeah. though. I don't know why you guys are focusing on YouTube. The DMCA problem isn't a YouTube-specific problem. It's a fucking cancer that's been spread by the movie and music yeah. industry to every True. website. 
Yeah, it's just it's just bending the knee and doing what's in their power to not get sued and shit. The real yeah, big ass, issue but... on all of it is American copyright law is such a goddamn it's predatory trash. and yeah. convoluted piece that's of shit. That's what I mean when I say DMCA. I mean copyright in general is such <clears> a fucking <throat> trashy system right now. That YouTube couldn't single-handedly fix it. It's not on them. That's not a defense of YouTube. Fuck him. But I'm just saying, like your whole system is yeah. ass. We really yeah. need blanket legislation to just change all of it. It's gotten so fucking out of control and ridiculous. Probably Arcade's fault. Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> and stuff like that created copyright law, I yeah. bet. That goddamn <laughs> mouse. Yeah, that's what I think of when I hear of the mouse. I think of Chuck E. Cheese. Yep. The highest mouse in entertainment. Charles Entertainment Cheese, that motherfucker. That son of a bitch. He promised to play me in chess on stream and never did, that motherfucker. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, it never happened. And he ghosted me. What happened? So I used to stream Kung Fu movies on Twitch. And at one point, the official Chuck E. Cheese Twitch account popped in. I was just talking in chat and like giving subs and shit. And uh, he was like, I want to challenge. He was like, I love Kung Fu movies. They're great. Uh, They're fun. I want to challenge you to chess live on stream. And I was like, fuck, that's amazing. Let's do it. I love Chuck E. Cheese. And uh, the day it was supposed to happen, he was like, hey, man, we were, were having some problems with our audio. So our stream setup really isn't working. So why don't we reschedule it for like later this month? And I said, okay, that sounds good. And then I never heard back from him again. And then the next article you saw was Chuck E. Cheese declares bankruptcy. Closing <laughs> yeah, down pretty all much. Stuff. <laughs> it was shockingly close to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't think that'll be happening anytime soon, unfortunately. Yeah, you Are never they still know. a thing? Chuck E. True. Cheese? He yeah. could come back. Chuck E. Cheese is doing oh. okay, aren't they? No, they're bankrupt, Charlie. Like fully? I thought they I thought they were still alive. I think they I still have locations, joking. but they're still bankrupt. Yeah, they still have locations. They're not like in the Oh, they actually yet. did go bankrupt? I was just joking. I didn't know that. No, they really did. So I Are they, not are they like the breath. same thing as um like Dave and Busters? Or is it different? Yeah. yeah, I know the animatronics. They're I known for their incredible there. Twitch live streams where a puppet of Chuck E. Cheese looks at the camera and says, Poggers! You guys remember that? No, yeah. I don't oh remember that Oh my god, that was such a great fucking clip. So Chuck E. Cheese used to stream on Twitch. And the way they'd do it is they'd play games with like a face cam, but the face cam was of a puppet of Chuck E. Cheese. And he would play like Among Us and Fall Guys, like all the, all the kids' games. And at one point he was playing Fall Guys and the game was starting, it was like the beginning of a round, and he just slowly looked to the camera like something's wrong, and the puppet just goes, Poggers! Uh, just unprompted out of nowhere, it sounds like the guy operating it is being strangled. It's great. <laughs> and then it just says nothing, it's just silent after that. Yeah, I wonder what to do. Oh, I love the Chuck E. Cheese Twitch channel, it was amazing. Did it not get very popular? No, of course not. No one gives a fuck about Chuck E. Cheese anymore. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, I just sort of, I yeah, did. I freaked good. out. When he came to my stream, I was like, oh my god, I love Chuck E. Cheese. I had my, like, fifth birthday party there. Holy shit. But modern kids don't give a fuck about Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, pretty much everything brick and mortar's dead. No one mm-hmm. wants to go there. Even my dad. I was talking to my dad the other day. I was like, you want to go to the store and get some lights? Because we were doing something around the house. And he was like, no, we're not going to the store. I'm just going to order them. It's like, we can just go. And he's like, no, I don't want to go to the store. <laughs> yeah. So literally no one wants to go to anything brick and mortar anymore. Would you Why classify would go... your dad as a boomer, Charlie? Does he have like 10 uh, boomer tendencies? Oh my God. I, I had to install Discord for him and he was lost. He was <laughs> lost. Wait, why'd you install minute. Discord for him? Yeah, what's because he going to do with Discord? Uh, he plays iRacing with his friends. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh... Oh, oh yeah. that's cute. I've been to that man's house a couple times to fix his computer stuff, and sometimes it's as simple as he's like, when I open my game, it doesn't show up in this monitor like I want it to, and I have to change, like, a resolution. <laughs> it's, done. it's just done, and I'm like, yeah, you're you welcome. Should, um, you should monitor his Discord interactions so he doesn't get groomed. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I think he's like the youngest in his group too. Like the, the people he raises with are like in their seventies. Like one of them's in his eighties, and That's my so dad cute. sent him a really nice gift basket for his birthday once. It's so adorable. <laughs> Oh, I, yeah, I cute. love seeing old people use technology and, and like enter that world. Maybe not in a you know sinister way, but like when they're just playing iRacing racing with their friends on Discord. That sounds cute. Oh, it's like it's that. so adorable. And my <laughs> mm. dad's nasty at the game. He wins pretty much all their races. He's also the host of their races now, so he'll host their races for them. It's it's great. What does hosting their races mean? And I racing uh, the races that are put on are put on by other people. So my dad puts on like professional settings, so it feels as real, like as real as possible. So like you need to monitor your traction, your lift, uh, tire pressure, and all of that. So he's the one that puts on like the really in depth runs. Yeah, your dad's great. He, uh, what was it when we were? He messaged me earlier this year talking about my house, offering advice on the house and stuff, the house mm-hmm. situation, which was very nice of him. And we got to talking about iRacing and stuff, and he showed me his setup. He sent me photos of his setup. It was so adorable. His setup's it. really cool. It yeah, is. Yeah, it's so it's cool. really cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a good man. I had him come over to my house and play Doom the other day to see if he could beat a game <laughs> journalist, and he did in one room, but lost in the second room. And he ended up really liking Doom a lot, so now he wants to get another computer to play games <laughs> outside cool. of iRacing. Aww. Wait, can't he just play them on the iRacing PC? Yeah, but he doesn't want to because that's his <laughs> iRacing rig. <laughs> he's going to have a computer for every game that he plays. Yeah. You're goddamn right he would. As my Doom 2016 rig. He could play with ring. the steering wheel, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, he should he should play Doom using the steering wheel. That'd be cool. True, that would have been be like that nasty. guy. Be like that guy who played Counter-Strike with the wheel and he had to honk the horn to shoot. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, wait, so what, what did you mean by he beat a games journalist? You had him compete against a games journalist? Yeah, so I just put his footage side by side with like Polygon. You remember when they played Doom 2016? Oh, I see. Yeah. I see, yeah. Okay. I wanted to see if he'd do better than them because he hasn't played like an actual shooter in 20 years. <laughs> he actually beat the game's journalist. Yep, he was like 30 seconds faster finishing the first room than Polygon's guy. <sighs> Do the um, Cuphead challenge too. See if yeah. you can get past the tutorial. Yeah. The <laughs> that was my next see one. if you can learn how to play faster than they did. That was the next one I was going to have him do. See if he can beat. It's just going to be really sad if he doesn't. Then it's like, damn it. God damn it, Dad. Has there been a single oh. piece of news in the last decade about game journalism that wasn't embarrassing? No, it's always embarrassing. Yeah. It is always it, without It's amazing how hard remember. that career has fallen. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. It's so disgraceful these days. It's fucking bad. I don't even know how they... How do they hire people who aren't even good at video games? I don't even think you I have to be good it. at video games. You just have to know how to play them at the very least. And they don't! I know. They fucking Barely. don't! I know. <laughs> there are game journalists who write articles that straight up admit they're like, I just don't play games anymore. I hate it's games. like, what the fuck? And they hate games. I, I hate oh games and I God. hate gamers. This no. is why I really respect people like Jeff Keighley, who's like, I'm going to make my own game awards because these other ones are shit and yeah. I actually care about games. And he goes all out and puts a lot into it. Because mm-hmm. there's just so many fucking games journalists now who are just like Hell bent on dismantling it and like destroying the games industry for whatever reason. I, I, like I understand... Power. I understand critiquing the industry and approaching it from a different angle and exposing things and getting invested in it, but the way that they attack quote unquote games is just so malicious and like stupid. It's they don't they're even just, hide they're it just either. so stupid. Like in some of their reviews, they're like, this is my least favorite genre of game ever, and I really <laughs> didn't want to play this, but I was forced to against my will, so I didn't bother learning the mechanics, and for that, I'm giving it a uh. four. <laughs> I know. Well, it's like people who o- are only in games journalism because they couldn't cut it in the big boy leaks. And it's you can always tell because they try to write about real world news and politics, yeah. but through a gamer lens. And so it's like, hey, this yeah. latest thing in politics is because of Gamergate. And then you scratch your head like, what the fuck are you talking oh, about? That was you, 10 years you, ago. Did you see the Kotaku tweet that said yeah. vilifying Amber Heard shows we learn nothing from Gamergate? <laughs> oh my what god. Yeah, that's, that. that's the biggest fucking thing. Like, what was the, did Kotaku also do it where they were like, we put the justices of the Supreme Court in Minecraft for no reason? Yeah. Did yes. you read that? Oh, yeah. I don't think that was Kotaku. 
It was Which one, one was that? That was... I don't know who it was. It was but... either Kotaku or Polygon, and who, I mean, yeah. what's the fucking difference? Who cares? The, but point is, yeah, it's, it's so fucking cringe. I I hope these people get replaced by AI, and it's, it is going to happen. I mean, companies already have bots writing articles for them as just summaries. All you have to do is give it a fucking prompt. It's like, okay, blame abortion on Gamergate. Go, open AI, and then you have a fucking article. Done. The fucking you can problem. have Dolly create the thumbnail, and you're finished. The fucking problem is that they're hiring journalists instead of hiring gamers. And like, that sounds like a stupid <laughs> thing to say. I will openly admit that sounds ridiculous. But if you're hiring a video games journalist, they should first and foremost be a fucking gamer. Someone who plays games and cares. Not someone who just wants to write articles about shit. Yeah, check your gamer score first. You only hire <laughs> if you're over 100,000. It is the stupidest point, I know, but I firmly believe it. I, it, I think you're right. I, I agree. Yeah. They just hire people that don't even like games to write their articles it makes no, no fucking yeah, sense. telling it, it is people who couldn't get hired by the new york times yeah. so now they could have you to imagine in the games journalism could you imagine huh? if you were reading espn and let's say they're doing they're doing a special on like charles barkley remembering charles barkley and his greats in the career and all that and the the opening lines were i don't really watch basketball i barely know how it's played in fact i've never seen a single game with charles barkley in it but let's talk about how great he was like what the fuck they wouldn't that's Why not is that even acceptable a good, not even a good comparison because it wouldn't end with let's talk about how great he was it was gonna be like and this is why i don't think anyone should care <laughs> <laughs> this is why he's actually why a scumbag Gamer piece fault. of shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so insane. How come in games this flies? Any other profession, everyone would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? But in games journalists, they get front page. Yeah, it doesn't make it's any insane. sense. It's, it's just really, uh, like, probably one of the most widely least respected careers I can think of, honestly. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't used to be. Like, remember, it didn't, I remember absolutely the didn't. I remember the early 2000s, I used to love grabbing like Game Informer yeah. magazine and stuff and just reading everything in, in, in the early yeah, In the absolutely. early 2000s, game journalism was seen as an incredibly cool career. People thought they were the coolest fucking people because they would just play games and write about what they were passionate about. It was, it was also an less corporatized though, to be fair. It was yeah. people oh, yeah. giving genuine opinions without having any relation to the property it, or the company. It was an industry, it was an industry fucking led by people who really gave a shit about it. Most of the journalists were ones who were like, yeah, I play games in my spare time i still like they were like i walk into the office i play this game i review it i go home i play more games like that was who worked there it's not that anymore yeah it's fucking insane yeah they were Whoa. they really were there was a different crop i remember watching the game informer people do let's plays on youtube from a bunch of years ago and they'd play all these shitty games oh, like yeah. ill bleed and what was the other one it was one blood. you told me about. I remember That's... you used to link me those videos. Ill Bleed, and I can't remember the other one either. It was like a... Overblood. Overblood 1 <sighs> and 2, and it used to be some guy called Tim and another guy called Dan, and they were really fun. It's just like Andrew said. These guys actually liked the games. Like, that guy Tim was really into fucking Mega Man and shit, and all he would do is play Mega Man games and go home oh, and I play more Tim, Mega Man, yeah. and then he got hired by capcom and stuff and it's like okay this is nice these are people who actually like video games and they like getting together having snacks and playing video games and now it's again these bitter fucking cocksuckers who just want to talk <laughs> politics and do activism and fucking minecraft it's and probably talk about because of a Gamergate like it's original sin it's probably because of a shift in the industry where all those people just became let's players and streamers and now the only journalists left are people who want to be journalists so, no I, I think it's a case of uh, people, it's just a case of people that hate video games entering the games yeah. industry. <laughs> that that's too. I mean, that's, that's too. A little, all it little is. column A, a little column B. Yeah, it's it's, it's like the Tumblr. It's the Tumblr crowd mixed with that as well, getting journalist jobs. But again, like Kai said, not being good enough at journalism to actually get journalist jobs, so they so they go for the low hanging fruit. And video games are technically the low hanging fruit since it's a entertainment medium uh, journalism is the low-hanging tree it's not as if like being a journalist in general is such a high fucking bar this arcane thing that is only bestowed upon it should be intelligent people in our class like you have to be genuinely fucking retarded to end up at kotaku writing articles about assassinating politicians in minecraft what is wrong with you grow the fuck up all right you guys want to <sighs> wrap yeah we yeah. should wrap i'm hungry okay. i'm also hungry Alrighty, thank you chat and thank you everyone listening for joining us for this official podcast episode. 
uh, bonus episodes over at patreon.com slash the official podcast. A lot of cool stuff over there. I'm putting up an episode of a watch along with Kai and I. We just watched Obi-Wan Kenobi, the first episode that's going up soon. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. I don't want to finish that. <laughs> we'll we also see. play Fall Guys now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.